when you eat a plant that has the Bt toxin in it, is nowhere like what you would have been eating if the Bt toxin was being sprayed on the plant and then you wash it off at home, right? And so this causes a problem because it becomes a potential allergen. So now you're eating something that human beings have never evolved to eat large quantities of, and it comes from a bacteria, a bacteria that's related to the anthrax bacteria, almost exactly the same, and you're going to be eating it in large amounts because if it's BT processed corn, that corn is going to be in a lot of different processed foods. So you're not just going to be eating it once in a while, you're going to be eating it in large quantities all the time. The other thing is BT cotton. The actual cotton that comes out of that process also has this BT on it. So not only are you eating it, you're wearing it too, right? So you're starting to increase the amounts of exposure. And any time that you're increasing amounts of exposure to these things, then you can start creating health problems, right? So if somebody asks you, you know, why it is that you're opposed, you know, a lot of it should be placed on the fact that these are potential allergens, right? The other thing that's a big, huge GMO crop is the Roundup Ready varieties, right? And so the Roundup Ready varieties, the way that they made those is they are tolerant to the pesticide glyphosate. And glyphosate is, um, it, it, it's used to interrupt the way that the plant can actually make sugar, right? And so if it's a weed, then if you put the glyphosate on it, it basically can't make its sugars and so it dies, right? And so what these, these guys did is they put in an alternative pathway from a bacteria so that it could withstand the glyphosate on it, okay? The problem isn't particularly with what they put into the plant. The problem is, is that they're drenching the plant in glyphosate. And, Ra and uh, Monsanto swore up and down that glyphosate was non-toxic. And for a long time, they put out all sorts of advertisements saying, you know, oh, your pets can eat this stuff, it's fine. You can eat this stuff, it's fine. It's biodegradable. There's all these wonderful things about it, right? The reality is, is that none of that's true. It, it's not biodegradable. It goes into the water system, and it doesn't break down in your body, and it, it poisons you. It causes all sorts of different problems, and they're finding now that it causes kidney disease, liver disease, it can cause infertility after three generations with mice. There's all sorts of studies that show that glyphosate is not a good thing. And we're increasing our exposure to glyphosate by eating these glyphosate-resistant plants. Not only that, we're drenching our soils in the glyphosate. And that glyphosate is having an effect on the microorganisms inside to test these plants and the safety of these plants. And so Arpad Putzdai did an experiment, and everybody thought that this experiment was, you know, I'm just going to show, it was going to prove the safety of GMOs. And the experiment was, is they had genetically modified a potato to express a certain protein in it that would allow it to be resistant to I insects, right? And so what he did is he tested that genetically modified potato, and he also tested just the potato plus the protein without being in the plant. So the protein that it was being made in the plant, but outside. So he wanted to test it. And, and the reason for that was he wanted to see, is there a difference between having the potato with the protein as opposed to the potato making the protein inside of it? And everybody thought, all the scientists thought, well, of course, there's not going to be any difference, right? But that, that's, this whole, that's the whole idea behind Monsanto's push that it, it's, it's uh, equivalence, basically, right? It's the same thing. It's just having the protein and the, and the plant. There's no difference because we put it in the plant. And so what he found was that the potato with the protein in the plant caused hyperproliferation of cells in the lower intestine, which means that the cells were starting to grow fast 
and that's a real bad sign. That's like a precursor to cancer, right? And it also makes um, the cells more susceptible to viral infections and all sorts of other things, mutations, stuff like that. And so he went and he told his supervisors, you know, they were going to go ahead and publish these results. And <laughs> his annual contract at Rowett was not renewed following the incident. He was fired from his job. And he was basically, it was like a witch hunt, right? So a lot of people wonder, okay, well, why, why aren't the scientists working on this? Why aren't the scientists coming out with studies showing what's going on? Well, Monsanto will not allow us to study the protein as it's made in the plant. They won't allow us because it's, it's intellectual property rights. So you have to get permission from Monsanto or Syngenta or whoever to test those proteins, right? And if you're going to publish something, you definitely have to get their permission, right? But guess what? They're not giving the permission. And if they do give the permission, they have the right to look at your studies before they're released. And if they don't like what they, what they see, then they just won't allow them to be released. And so it's really horrible from a scientist standpoint because we want to understand why is it that there's a difference. Right? What, what's going on? How, how can we figure out to make this sort of stuff safer? Or, you know, what, what are we missing in, in you know, the rationalization of this? And they're just not allowing it to happen. The other thing that's really troubling is that there are ways to make these genetically modified plants so that they do not pass on their genes. So that the genes, the genetic modification doesn't go into the pollen. It stays in the, in the plant but doesn't go into the pollen. There are ways. There have been ways. And they're not doing it. And so to me, that means that that's, that's on purpose. You know? And so their entire, their entire you know, cost-benefit ratio is, okay, well, you know what? If, if it does spread, then the places that it spreads to well, we can go ahead and say, hey, you're a patent infringement. You know, you guys, you guys are, uh, you guys need to pay us now because you have our genes in your plants, and it allows them to basically spread their technologies through kind of terrorist me methods, right? Um, from what I heard is that Brazil outlawed GMOs, and some somehow their plants got mixed up with GMOs, and what they were saying is is that they think that Monsanto, and I, I don't know this, but the claim was is that they were being given free seed in unlabeled bags and that the people were planting it then and then when it contaminated their food system, they couldn't just completely erase all their food. They had to decide, okay, we'll, we'll allow GMOs now, right? So those are, those are some of the troubling things. and. You know, I, I, I would like to share with everybody, you know, that there are studies out there and if anybody ever comes up to you and says, Oh, you know, you're irrational and you know, there's there's no proof, that's absolutely not true. There's a lot of proof that this stuff is happening. Um, the other thing that's for potential concern is we just there's just a paper that just came out recently and um, they found out that the actual genetic material from a plant, when you eat it, and they were they were talking about rice, white rice, not genetically modified, but just white rice. And they found that the genes in the plant can actually have an effect on your genes. And so when you eat a plant, it all doesn't get broken down into little building blocks so that you can build it up however you want. Sometimes those building blocks or those little pieces kind of get through, and when they get through, they can actually have an effect on your genes, right? And that's all right with the plants that, you know, we've evolved with and we've eaten for many years and, you know, and cultures have had, had no problems with, but when you're talking about plants that are now making pesticides, and you're talking about plants that have these different genes in them that have never been in those those, those particular varieties before and that we haven't been eating for, you know, thousands of years then you start to have some problems, right? And the other thing is that the way that they're putting these genes into the plants, they're putting them in random areas. They're not putting them in a particular area. And so you don't know what kind of effect that random integration can have on the nutritional quality of the plant, 
on the disease resistance of the plant, all sorts of things. And that's actually why they're outlawing BT cotton in India right now. It's because you know they were sold BT cotton. They're saying, hey, your yields are going to go up, and they did it. And all these people, all these farmers, are committing suicide. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like thousands of people that are committing suicide because. You know, they they lose their entire cotton plants to some other disease that maybe their natural cotton plants or native cotton plants never had any problems with. And it's because these genetically modified organisms are sometimes actually weaker than than the uh, than the wild type organisms. So, if anybody would like to talk about any of these topics or have any more questions, I'd I'd love to answer. Uh, I have a question. How do they? What? How do they get the genetic material in the plants if they're them in random places? Okay, so the way that they get it into the plants is they use, so there's, there's this, uh, there is a um, bacteria that kind of has a, a relationship with a plant. It grows in its roots and what happens is it makes kind of like a little like tumor type thing on the root of the plant and what it does is it takes some of its DNA and it inserts it into the plant DNA and it makes that plant produce a sugar that only it can eat. And so that way it can kind of survive inside the plant. And that's natural, right? So there's bacteria that are doing genetic modification already, right? And so what we did is we took that technology and applied it towards putting whatever genes we want. So we swap out the instructions for the protein that it made and or that sugar that it made and put whatever we want into it. But it, it's not it's not something that, oh well we know exactly where we're putting it in. It's something that's random. And then there's another way of doing it is with viruses. So there's viruses can also put pieces of DNA into organisms and they do all the time. We actually have pieces of viral DNA in us right now. Um, from the evolution of organisms. So they go ahead and they use these viruses and the viruses also integrate randomly to go ahead and put in these genes. Yeah. they actually create the, uh, the plants is plants have the ability to grow from just one cell in any part of the plant. You can grow the entire plant from just one cell and uh, that's how they do it. They, they grow them on little petri dishes with nutrient solution and then they go ahead and they pick the ones that work out the best. <laughs> Do I think anything sounded good. Yeah, that actually sounds good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, where, where are they? Are they <laughs> They're not in whole food. It's like professional sounding, no matter what he says. Now, <laughs> sweet corn that has been genetically modified to be sold um, as a whole food, and that's the first one. Um, oh wait, and the, and the the rainbow papaya is another one that they have out on the market. But most of the other stuff, like the BT corn and potatoes and things like that, are actually in processed foods. They're not in whole foods, um, or they're animal feed. And that's not good either, because if it's an animal feed, you're concentrating the toxic load into the animal, and then you're consuming it, in the case of pesticide-resistant plants. I'm going to drop the car off by you. Okay. Right so, so getting sick from this is actually a toxic thing. It's not, you know, it's not something you should take medicine for. It's something that you have to avoid the toxin, right? So, it's just like, you know, if you expose yourself to gasoline and it makes you sick, the only way that you're going to get over that is by not exposing yourself to gasoline anymore, right? So, so the whole point of this is that we need to know what what foods are GMOs so that if we are having an adverse reaction, we can trace it back to where where the source is, right? And right now we don't have any way of doing that. So that's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.
Alright, it don't work. <laughs>